Moving on to our second keynote address of the day. It is titled, A Comprehensive Agenda for Skill Development. The keynote speaker is Dr. K.P. Krishnan, who is the former secretary, Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship. He leads a group focused on research and policy outreach in regulatory and public economics, including concerns about investor protection and financial sector reforms, land policy and records, public finance and public administration, and law, economics, and justice. May I now request Dr. Krishnan to come on stage and start his address. Over to you, Dr. Krishnan. Thank you very much, Shita. Very good morning to all of you. I am happy to be part of Charcha 2021 and share my thoughts on the challenges of skill development. Now, given the limitations both of the media, you know, this particular media, as well as the time that's available, this is necessarily a bird's eye view, a 30,000 feet sort of overview of a pan-India look at skill development. Skill development, the phrase itself, has multiple meanings. We conversationally talk about the skills of a painter, the skills of the rangoli maker. These are more in the form of uh, hobbies or talent and art. And essentially in the direction of self-actualization. In the policy world, in the world of charcha, the phrase skill development is strongly related to livelihoods. This is more than, you know, the link of skill development with livelihoods is more than the link for education, which ordinarily is focused more on knowledge as an end in itself. However, skill is also based on instruction and hence there is a close link between education and skill development. Let's look at some of the characteristics or the policy aspects of uh, skill development. Number one, as I mentioned briefly, it's closely connected with education. Number two, it is closely connected with employers as in skill development, learning is by doing. A lot of learning, whether it's cookery or auto mechanic or carpentry, a lot of the learning is not necessarily instructional. In fact, a lot of the learning is by doing. The third characteristic which has an implication for policy is typically most skill development programs will be characterized by what we call the merit good characteristic in public economics. I will very presently elaborate on it. But the implication of this is it is likely to require subsidizing by public expenditure. The fourth aspect of skill development that we need to keep in mind is that skill development needs to be demand driven. And there are two clear dimensions to this demand. A, demand of employers and demand of employers keeping in mind the diversity of employers. Second is the demand of the individual. The individual, he or she who is undergoing skill development, again keeping in mind the diversity of individuals. The fifth characteristic relevant for public policy is that since it is related to livelihoods, it is very closely connected with macroeconomic policy, macroeconomic trends, and developments in the economy overall. And lastly, we need to keep in mind in the Indian constitutional context that skill development has to be done in a multi-tier government ecosystem. Let's very briefly look at each of these six aspects. Number one, connection with education. 
both skill development and education involve instruction and hence there is an institutional link there are differences as i mentioned earlier a lot of skill development is learning by doing but fundamentally remember this is one continuum it can for example start with basic carpentry and there are now jargons of what are called national skill qualification frameworks which at the higher levels merge with the national education qualification frameworks but for us it's enough in this conversation to understand that it can start with basic carpentry and go right up to phd in wood technology and wood science but the important point to keep in mind is skill development is typically less than a third typically less than 30% classroom instruction 70% or more is learning by doing and learning by doing ideally at the workplace not even in a laboratory clear evidence of recent research points to the importance of two to use the jargon foundational and transferable skills essentially these are reading writing arithmetic and some behavioral skills and increasingly some it skills attitudes a whole bunch of these kinds of things these clearly we will all appreciate are best delivered early in a child's life along with basic education second aspect of skill development that i highlighted when i was talking about policy on skill development is the connection with employers most skills are acquired by doing and not by instruction alone the best examples of skill development uh, nationally internationally are therefore linked to employers now to ensure outcomes for learners it needs to be systemic and purposive learning by doing it's not that you let loose a kid in a factory and expect that she or he will learn by herself or himself no there is systemic and purposive learning by doing in addition to prevent this from becoming a source of cheap labor and exploitation typically this connect with employers and learning by doing is formalized as apprenticeship and in most jurisdictions this is typically statutorily regulated excuse me however given the nature of this learning by doing you can immediately appreciate that there are likely to be huge challenges when the bulk of the employers in a society are unorganized and informal establishments and formal mechanisms that we have established for instance the national skill development corporation which is co-hosting this charcha on skill development has established sector skill councils which are an amalgamation of industry employers of the formal kind given that a large number of employers are unorganized and informal we need a completely different and decentralized as well as discretionary approach to apprenticeship let's move on to the fourth aspect of skill development and this is the role of state role of public policy there is clearly enough theory economic theory public choice theory which shows there is potential market failure in the market for skill acquisition on account of externalities as well as information asymmetry typically and certainly in india most consumers of skill development are likely to be 
from the vulnerable economic and social groups. Therefore, the role for state, both as a provider as well as a regulator, is axiomatic. These are different roles, the role of the provider and the role of the regulator, and need to be organized differently, designed differently. Skill provision typically needs also strong local presence, local roots. So in the multi-tier government structure and in the Indian constitutional context, we need to keep in mind this fact. The fact that ideally, both in a theoretical as well as in our constitutional sense, the government of India should do funding and regulation. And why? A, government of India typically has the larger purse strings as well as there is a national market for labor in India. And hence, funding and regulation at the national level, but execution at state and even lower district and block levels. The next aspect that needs to be spoken about is the demand driven side of skill development and very quickly the first dimension of demand driven skill development is skilled workers need to be absorbed by employers skill development programs should therefore produce skills demanded by employers this is not easy to discern and requires hard and smart work because employers do not come out and explain to you and me the kind of micro skills that are required. Clearly, the old employment exchange model has not worked, will not work. We need to harness technology and aggregator and platform models that have worked elsewhere for identifying and aggregating demand. Equally, the nature of employment itself is changing. Wage employment is increasingly being replaced by self-employment and gig economy livelihoods. And hence, the nature of skill development will need to change. Very quickly, the other side of the demand dimension, the consumer side, the consumer of skill acquisition, the youngster opting for skill development also has her aspirations as well as her aptitudes. Skill development programs need to take note of both, but the end goal requires aligning all this with market and employer requirements. And hence, there is a lot of order matching as well as counseling that is required. Kids do not know where are the opportunities and hence need to be counseled on opportunities, aptitudes, and their fit for specific roles. And modern IT, modern communication can hugely help in this. In addition, modern IT can help in building up micro credentials to solve the information asymmetry problem. Remember, we have to deal with an anonymous order matching model like in stock exchanges and hence it will be useful to build IT systems very similar to what exchanges have built. Overall macroeconomic trends and policy clearly has an important implication. Private sector development, formalization of enterprises, labor laws, financial sector regulation, all these impact growth as well as job creation. Remember, skill development is the tail that will follow the macro dog. Policies that understand the informal nature of labor markets and don't drive them underground will clearly help. In conclusion, in my last 30 seconds, greater integration of skill development with school education. Focus on foundational and transferable skills. Domain skills require involvement of employers. Local employers and institutions need to connect with skill development. Local authorities need to play a higher role. Greater involvement of the youth getting skilled, 
remember the changing nature of jobs and ensure that facilitatory government policies are put in place. Thank you, and it's been a pleasure being here. Thank you, Dr. Krishnan, for sharing those words of wisdom. I'm sure his suggestions will be helpful and, and reach to all the concerned stakeholders. Thanks a lot for joining us today. Thank you.